Hello and welcome to What Culture Here, What Culture Wrestling Here on the YouTube. I'm Andrew Pollard and as you can see, I'm joined by David Finley. Before we get going with that, if you like this content, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Find us on all the usual podcast platforms. David, first and foremost, how are you doing, dude? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Thanks for having me, by the way. Yeah, great. Great, great, great. Good. Uh, nice that we can make this work with time differences because you are in Japan right now. Um, what a time to be alive. But how, how have you found 2020, I guess, should be the first question. Um, well, it's been wild, but also I've had a lot of vacation time, so I can't really complain too much. Um, definitely been an interesting year, yeah. for sure. Hang on uh, just a sec. Hang on just a sec. Sorry. Uh, chicken thigh, please. Chicken, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, one. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. No worries, dude. Chicken thighs. <laughs> yeah, chicken thigh. Yeah, young boys are going shopping, so. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, dude, do we keep this in? Do we start recording from the beginning? I don't really know. Oh, whatever you want. Sorry, if you want to start over. First and foremost, David, how are you doing these uh, right now here in 2020? I'm actually doing not too bad. I don't have too much to complain about. How about yourself? Yeah, I, I cannot complain. I'm, I'm sat here uh, on my morning here with my nice morning brew coffee, talking to yourself all the way over in Japan. So things can be worse, man. Things can be worse. Um, I feel yeah. It's, it's been a crazy year. But we, we are here, first and foremost, to talk about Ring of Honor, about the, the pure championship tournament. Uh, you, you're facing off against Jay Lethal this weekend, which is sure to be very, uh, very, very, very much fun. Um, it's you obviously got past Rocky Romero in, in the first round. Now you've got Jay Lethal. Um, I guess just before we get into the match too much, just that championship coming back. Um, how cool was that to you when you heard that the pure title was coming back to RH? Well, I actually felt honored that I was uh, considered for the tournament um, because it does take a certain kind of wrestler to be able to do that tournament, I feel. And, uh, you know, like, the greats that have held that, you know, Samoa Joe, uh, I think AJ Styles had it as well. There's a lot of big names that have had. Jay Lethal even is a former yeah. champion. So, uh, I mean, it was really, really cool. Uh, I didn't really know fully what to expect going into it, but uh, I really enjoyed it. I really think um, ROH did something special with that, and I really think everyone should actually check it out. Mm, yeah, totally. I mean, it's it, if, if you don't have access to it on TV, it's available online um, on, on the Ring of Honor website to watch for free every single episode so far. Just one hour episodes, two matches with some great video packages to hype up all the uh, all, all the uh, contestants, competitors, I guess you call it. It's just it's such um, such a cool, unique um, way of doing wrestling, I guess. We were talking before this about how everybody has their own different uh, favorite flavors of ice cream. And yeah, just... The, the pure tournament, the pure title from back in the day is, is great. See it come back is great. And obviously it came back in a massive way with the very first match being your opponent, Jay Lethal, against Dalton Castle, these two former ROH world champions. It's like, this, this, is, this is getting off to a bang and this tournament is not going to be easy. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty legitimate. The names you have, like you got Rocky Romero, who I've lost count of how many championships he's held. Dalton Castle, a former national beach wrestling champion. Jay Lethal is Jay Lethal. He's, in my opinion, one of the greatest wrestlers alive currently. Um, uh, Matt Seidel's in there. Who else is in there? Delirious. Uh, Josh Woods. My boy, Josh Woods. Yes. Yeah, Josh Woods. Yeah. Uh, Gresham, Hot Sauce. You know, there's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of studs in this tournament. Yeah, man. To totally. Um, we, we spoke to Josh, I think, about two weeks ago. And it's, uh, it's, I think the, what the great thing is, I talked about it there, is even if maybe people haven't watched ROH in a little while, or maybe because there, there's some unsigned ROH guys in the tournament who are making their ROH debuts, but the, the video package that the, the ROH do on these guys is, is phenomenal, just to get you up to speed on. Like, in five minutes, you know everything about this guy, why he's in the tournament, why he wants to win, what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are. Um, it's just a really, really cool format. I mean, uh, how, do you, how, how are you liking the pure rules? Uh, I, well, I was, uh, <laughs> uneasy about them because I'm like, oh, what if I forget I'm not supposed to punch or something, but you know, it actually worked out in my favor. I feel like, um, uh, I tend to not throw too many punches anyways, I've realized. Uh, so I didn't have to adapt too much. I just had to be careful with, uh, how many rope breaks I use. So that was a little difficult. It makes you think a little more. You gotta, you gotta play chess and not checkers on that one. Yeah, um, and for anyone not familiar with uh, the, the pure rules, it's uh, three rope breaks you're allowed, you're allowed one closed fist, there has to be the, the handshake of honor, 
and that's it. It's just let the other two guys go at it, and it's just it adds like a whole new layer of psychology to, to matches. Um, I, I mean, like the Josh Woods Kenny King match where it all came into play with the rope break. It's yeah, just a really cool way of of doing things. Yeah, there's also time limits, and uh, if you hit yeah. the time limit, it goes to a judge's decision. That was uh, really interesting as well. Yeah, yeah, and it's what 15 minute time limit in the first round, and I think it's 20 in the seconds, and yeah, and it kind of goes up and 15, 20, 30 in like an hour. Yeah, you can have that hour, that hour Broadway at some point down the line. Yeah, man, <laughs> get your cardio good for that one. Uh, but like, when you talked about the the previous uh, pure champions. Is there? I guess it's like a loaded question, really. But is there a favorite? You talked about Jay Lethal, Samoa Joe, Brian Dan. Oh, Brian Dan is, I guess, technically retired the belt. But um, Nigel McGuinness, who he won it off. Doug Williams, John Walters. There's just AJ Styles. is the first champ. Is there a favorite? Is it possible to pick a favorite? Uh, not really. I, maybe I would say Jay Lethal just because he's in this tournament and I have to wrestle him. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, the names that have held that championship is uh, a, if you win this, you're in good company for sure. Yeah, it's there's, the, there's a lot of royalty, wrestling royalty in that, that conversation. Um, I, I, not to look too far ahead, but because you have got like basically the franchise of Ring of Honor to get past first. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's kind of a big deal facing Jay Lethal. Uh, but after that, it's going to be Fred Yehai who got the, the surprise upset, some would say, over Silas, um, or Tracy Williams in the A Block finals. It's uh, just if you could look ahead and think, yeah, put Jay Lethal behind me. Is there somebody you prefer to wrestle out of those two guys? Well, I know both of them. Fred uh, Yehai is actually a fellow Atlanta uh, person. So uh, I, we actually have a couple of mutual friends that are outside of wrestling. So I know, I know Fred a bit. And then uh, Hot Sauce, Tracy Williams, also we were. I was briefly in a faction with him in ROH called Lifeblood. And then uh, that kind of went to the wayside. But yeah, you know, I, they're both really good wrestlers. So uh, I, I don't have a preference. I'm up for the challenge of either one of them. Got to get through Lethal first, though. Except that, that it is. It's like you, you can't look past that guy because he he has been like the cornerstone of of ROH for so long. I think he was only nineteen when he won this title for the very first time back back in the day or whenever. So it's like, yeah, it's uh, how do you approach something like that with a Jay Lethal, knowing just how good he is? Does that? I guess obviously that just forces you to to up your game. And there's extra pressure. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, um, it's a good pressure. You know, Ric Flair said, if you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. And in ROH, I really do believe that Jay, Le- Jay Lethal is the man to beat. And uh, a little added level of that, I am a New Japan wrestler. I did come up through the New Japan system. So, like, yeah. it is a little bit of, uh, you know, New Japan versus ROH right there. I'm, I'm, I am representing my company. Yeah. So uh, there's an added level to that for me. Yeah, um, and you've got like uh, Ian Riccoboni putting you over on commentary as like you're the favorite to win this whole thing. So it's there's that pressure there, like people watching thinking, well, this guy's got a win now. I mean, the, the commentators are putting him over. Um, but like, how, how is it just to to float between? Well, you said you are a New Japan Pro Wrestling wrestler. Um, how is it to have that freedom to be able to come and work with with ROH? Or you've gone and done stuff with, I guess, CMLL in, in Mexico. Um, how, how's that to have that? I guess you've got your base, but you've got that freedom as well. Yeah, New Japan's kind enough to uh, let me do outside stuff. They're selective with what I do, though, but they're like, hey, do you want to go do this? And I love wrestling, so I say yes to most things. Um, but yeah, it also, it was just great timing with, uh, you know, the pandemic not being able to travel to Japan uh, at that point. It was like, hey, do you want to go do this? And I was like, yes, please let me go wrestle. I haven't done it in far too long. Let me go, you know, dip my toes in something now. Yeah. How was it to return after that? Because it was like pretty much, I mean, uh, AEW carried on, WWE carried on, NXT carried on. But for a lot of the other wrestling companies, it was just, I guess, basically six months out of action. Um, so how was that to return and to return to, I guess, an empty arena? Uh, yeah, that was really interesting for me because I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, I remember the first one I did was a New Japan taping. Excuse me. And... Uh, and music was playing. I go through the curtain. They still had a curtain. <laughs> so I go through. I'm like, ah, there's nobody here. And it was just like, it was a big shock to me, even though I knew it was coming. It's just like, ah, oh, all right. So there's no adrenaline. Wrestling hurts way more when there's no people. So I can't wait for them to come back. Yeah. Because uh, obviously New Japan, there's the, the G1 climax at the moment. But how how are things looking in New Japan? Because I believe they've started to let some fans back into the, the venues that they now. Yeah, I haven't been to a show yet over here. I'm, I, uh, I, have, I have to sort my visa up first. That's why I'm over here right now. But um, I believe they're doing half capacity. Uh, but they're not allowed to, like, vocalize anything. They can only, like, clap and stuff. Right. So, uh, which, 
Japan is the only country where you can go like these are the rules and they go like all right these are the rules we'll follow them like they're yeah. it's a great place for if there's a pandemic going on going like all right everybody wear a mask do this wash your hands they're like all right this is what we're doing you know so like it's the perfect place for that to happen because that would never happen in uh in the states for sure yeah even, even now like because i mean just watching some of the other shows and you see some fans in the audience where like yeah the masks they're not even on or they're on and then they're kind of off for certain bits where they want to cheer and shout and holler and it's like i don't know if that's the wisest thing right now but but um yeah i mean you, you've been well you came up through the new japan dojo um mm-hmm. how was that moving over to japan at such a young age and then going into that environment obviously you had some training from that certain uh, that, that certain father of yours who uh, yeah. <laughs> instilled some stuff in your own show. But how was that going to the dojo? Well, so basically, once I finished high school, I was traveling the world. Like I spent a year in Africa um, doing like volunteer work slash wrestling. I spent six months in England doing uh, you know the Butlins camps with Brian Dixon. Uh, I did the states for a bit, you know. So I'd been around, but then it was like I was 21 years old, had this opportunity to come to Japan and train the dojo, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And at that point in time, the only person I knew was Jay White from England. Uh, so like I had one person that I knew, but still I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I remember my first day in the dojo, uh, I had asked Jay previously, like, hey man, I've heard the horror stories about the squats. How many have you done? What's the most? He's like, ah, 500. I'm like, ah, all right, I can do that. That's manageable. Day one, Yo looks over at me and goes like 1,000. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and then on top of that, they count in Japanese, and it's my it's like day two there. So I had to watch the clock. Um, and it takes 45 minutes to do about 1,000 squats. So yeah, I, I, uh, <laughs> I, it, was, it was really interesting. Um, it was scary at times, like just nerves of being in a brand new country. But I, it was the best thing I've ever done as far as my career goes, I think. Yeah. And was it, I guess, was it, were you always going to be a wrestler given that you're what fourth generation? I think now was that like, yeah, this is, this is another thing that's going to go and wrestle and beat the crap out of people across the world. Yeah. Uh, I can't recall ever wanting to do something different. Um, like you said, fourth generation, my great grandfather was in the wrestling, but he was a wrestler and a promoter. My grandfather, same thing. Uh, my dad's uncle, so my grandfather's brother was a referee. My dad obviously is Fit Finlay, a wrestler. His sister was a referee. Uh, me and my brother and sister are all amateur wrestlers. My brother's, he's 18 years old now. He's trained to become a wrestler. Um, and then there's me. So yeah, it was, uh, it was always a given that this is what I was going to pursue. Yeah. Is there like a, a first memory for you of wrestling or kind of, or where that light bulb went off of like, yeah, this is, I like this, this is good uh no because it's what i it's just been a constant in my life uh, i do remember i think my earliest wrestling memory that i actually remember on my own is uh in somewhere in germany when my dad was wrestling for cwa before the show or like at the start of the show they would parade all the wrestlers out and kind of go like oh uh, here's this person here's this person do like a big introduction um so for anybody that's ever been to a cwa show or ever been to a wrestling show like the schutz and platz and hanover will kind of know what i'm talking about but uh, my mom got me matching gear made to my dad. So I'd like little shamrock tights at two years old. And they go, I'd get announced and I'd go and do my little pose and, you know, I'd go. So like, that was, that's the earliest I can remember being, you know, around wrestling. Yeah, I've, I've never seen somebody so badass rock such a, a great mullet as well. It was just like that, that hair, man. Uh, but nobody, you couldn't say anything to because obviously, it. yeah, it's like nobody's going to say anything bad to, to, to fit Finley. Um, but what, what was there like that pressure that comes with that name? I mean, even, I guess more so from the young age, you talked about doing like the, 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 the Butlins camps here in the UK or, or in Germany where it could, because your, your dad had been across the world, everybody knew that name. So just when you're that young kid, that first year or two in the business then, is there that pressure of, right, this is the Finley kid, let's see what he can do? Yeah, there is. Uh, and I was kind of oblivious to that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for the first like year or two, I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm, it's wrestling. This is normal for me. So like, I, I was kind of unaware of the pressure, but I mean, there, there's pros and cons that come with it. The pro is like, I get my foot in the door a whole lot easier than most people would. The con is like, I have this massive shadow of my dad, in my opinion, being one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Yeah. And like, my goal is to surpass him. So like, that's, that's a pretty big hill to overcome. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the best advice he's given you then over the years? Save your money. <laughs> no, uh, I would say the best advice my dad gave me and was also given to me by Robbie Brookside was uh, keep your mouth closed and keep your eyes and ears open. Yeah, oh, uh, that's, um, that so seems like, like great advice. Just, 
you know, I'll always be in a lear- position of learning. And I, I feel like it's gotten me pretty far so far. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just be that kind of sponge. Just sit there. Don't say too much, but just take it all in and absorb it all that you can. Um, so with Japan, that's kind of like your second home, I guess, or one of your many homes, because you are, you are kind of following that footprint of like, well, I'll go and wrestle with RH in America. I'll go to CMLL. I'll, I'll, my base is New Japan. Um I do the, the tours in Germany, the UK. Uh, so where is home for, for David Finley right now? So oh, uh, I actually grew up in Atlanta. My we moved. I saw. I was born in Germany. We moved over there when my dad got signed to WCW in like '96 or '7 or '8, whenever late '90s. Um, and I've just lived there ever since. Uh, my wife and I are actually looking to relocate to somewhere a little more tropical. Uh, I think we're moving to Florida at some point next year once everything kind of settles down. But yeah, I would consider, so for me, Atlanta is home. That's where my family is. It's where my pets are. That's where my wife is. But uh, Japan is definitely a second home for me. It's home away from home. Yeah. Uh, like I've got, you know, like I'm usually at the Tokyo Dome Hotel. That's kind of like my neighborhood. I know where everything is. You know, I got my daily routine that I go through. So it's it's not, I'm not in a foreign place anymore when I'm over here. Yeah, um, obviously one of the, the biggest shows you've worked was earlier this year, Wrestle Kingdom 14, where, where Finn Juice, uh, I guess you call it, uh, yourself and Juice Robinson won the IWGP Tag Team Championships from Gorillas of Destiny. Um, how cool a moment was that to, to perform in that venue at that time? Obviously it was uh, Jushin Liger's farewell weekend, winning the belts. Uh, how was that as a moment? Uh, that was actually, for me on like a personal level, that was probably the top moment in my career. I would I was just coming off of a shoulder injury. I tore half my labrum, had to get it surgically repaired. So I was out of, out of uh, competition for most of 2019. My first tour back was World Tag League. Juice and I won that and earned our shot at the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. And like, so I spent the whole year just being kind of like frustrated and going like, oh, I've got to, you know, put the work, I've got to put the work in. I've got to be better than what I've been, you know? So that, that was, to me, on a personal level, like, I proved to myself, like, you know, I am as good as I say I am, and I can, you know, I can be everything that I want to be. Yeah. So, uh, also, my wife was there, so that was extra cool. I remember, like, my first Tokyo Dome was, like, two years before. I think uh, myself, Ricochet, and Kojima were defending the trios titles. I got to fly my mom and my dad out for that. That was my first Tokyo Dome, but this awesome. was, like, this was, like, the biggest moment for me. So, like, my best friend got to be there, so that was cool. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how is your dad then with that? Is he like your biggest critic or is it just very much great job or is he just always like, you did well, but this is what you can do better next time? Yeah. So he's like, I, he's like my biggest fan and he's, he really doesn't critique me unless I ask him. He's, he's like super sweet about it. He's like, oh, I don't want you to feel like I'm picking him. Like, no, dad, tell me everything. <laughs> so, uh, no, cause he just, you guys know him as like this badass, but for me, he's just a loving dad, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, like I, I kind of have to go like, dad, dad, actually like be real with me. So, uh, and then he is, you know, so like now we're, we've hit this point where he doesn't have a problem, you know, pointing things out and being nitpicky with things. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's awesome. He's my mentor. He's my teacher. I would credit him to everything that I am. Yeah. I mean, because it is like, not just is he one of the, the greatest in-ring workers of his generation, but then obviously after that, after he retired from the ring, all the producer work or the backstage work. So it's like who better to, to sit under the learning tree with than the, the your dad, man. That's such a great asset to have there. But what, what yeah, is next? For, yeah, uh, what is next for you in New Japan Pro Wrestling then? Away from the obviously the pure tournament and RH. Ah, uh, I mean tag league's coming up. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I haven't heard anything. I'm really right now. I'm over here because my visa expires on the 14th, and they needed to get it renewed so, for the year moving forward. Um, and you have to be over here to do it. They're not doing it overseas because of the current global situation. So uh, assuming that goes through, I would hope tag league, but I have no idea. I haven't been told anything yet. Yeah. Um, and I kind of have to pick up on what you said a little earlier about maybe moving to Florida, because that is, that's quite the hotspot these days, um, whether it's for um, AEW talent and NXT talent, WWE talent. Is that like a goal for yourself? Is it just enjoy what you're doing now? And if something like that comes along and it's the right time, cool. If the timing's right and the money's right, yeah, but I'm I'm happy where I am. I'm moving to Florida for, like, outside of wrestling reasons. I like being by the beach. My wife and I like being on water. So it's, it's more for recreational activities than anything else. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, just to, to bring it back to, uh, to Ring of Honor, the Pure Title Tournament, that is, uh, I believe it's this Saturday it is, um, this weekend, that yourself against Jay Lethal. What can we expect from that match? 
Jay Lethal is one of the best people that I've ever stepped in the ring with. Uh, he definitely pushed me to my limit. I hope I pushed him to his. You're going to see a very good, pure wrestling match. Yeah. Um, and as mentioned, if you've not, anybody out there who's not seen the previous pure tournament matches, go and check them out. They're really, really good. It's, it's kind of, it's to the point, it's very clear. It's just an hour of TV with great video packages, great wrestling, um, all available on the Ring of Honor website, which you can check out these episodes for free every single week. Um, can't recommend it enough. Um, I'm a bit of a fanboy for that stuff. So yeah. <laughs> um, where, where can people keep up to date with yourself and David? What's your, the, the social media tags and stuff to throw out? So my Twitter is at the David Finlay. My Instagram is at super, super Dave. Uh, you can follow me on there. Instagram, you'll mostly see my pets. Twitter is kind of for work. So uh, whatever you want to see. It's there. Yeah. It, pets are never a bad time, man. Always get those pets out there. Um, oh, I'll play with the pets. I love my pets. <laughs> <laughs> well, what have you got on the moment then? What pets have we, can, we, can we expect to see on your Instagram? Yeah, so I've got my two dogs. One's Kira, one's Iggy. Uh, and then I've got a cat named Cersei. And I'm trying to see Game of Thrones. The name accidentally fit. <laughs> we got her nice. as like a four-week-old kitten. And yeah, she, she suits the name for sure. <laughs> that sounds like one mean old cat. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, great. Well, this has been fun. Thank you so much for, for giving us so much time to come and chat to us here um, on this this Friday as we're recording this. Uh, be sure to follow us at What Culture WE on Twitter. Uh, follow me at Culture Left Peg on Twitter. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. Say how great this interview was. Say how much of a bad job I've done. Either way, just throw out the comments on there. Um, David, thank you again, my man. And, uh, and we will see you all soon. Thanks for having me.